Welcome to the Black Shark Hunt podcast series. I'm your host, Zach Crooks. In this series, we're going to be discussing various topics with various guests from all different walks of life. Guests that have overcome depression, anxiety, trauma, and addiction. Some of the content and language in this podcast may be confronting. What we hope for you to get out of this podcast is some good advice and good inspiration. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy today's guest. Well, welcome to the first episode. Our first guest is one of our own from Brothers Oz Facebook group. Quick introduction today. After high school, he became involved in some rough crowds, became surrounded by some shit choices and mental health issues. He's fought against depression, addiction, would-be robbers, and the chance to meet Koshi from Sunrise. He's here today to talk about his journey through life's ups and downs, how he's overcome aspects of his own mental health, and to discuss the goals he's been kicking in recent years as a dedicated husband and dad. Welcome to the show, Jacob Jordan. Hey, Zach. Pleasure to be here, mate. No, it's good. Um, first cab off the rank. Feels good. Yeah. yeah. So I'll set the bar low, boys. Don't worry. <laughs> You'll be right. No, that's all right. So um, let's let's start from the start. What was um what was what was Jacob Jordan like growing up? As oh, a kid? yeah. Look, childhood was. I don't know. To be honest, I, I feel like there's uh probably something that might something I might be blocking out, or you know, I've always got memories of um, things being sort of peachy. But a lot of the time, when um, I bring up certain aspects around my wife or other people, they're like. No, no, that's not what happens. I'll be like, oh, you know how your parents would just do this? And they're like, no, man. So, yeah, right. Um, but, you know, a bit bit different. We um, we moved to Cairns when I was pretty young, mm. um, I think grade one. And then, yeah, mum and dad were always, they're, they're a unique pair. Um, yeah. Fucking unique. Um, so they were always, you know, a bit of hit and a miss sort of, sort of thing. And mum brought us back down here and... Um, had a few boyfriends on the go and all sorts of things. And yeah, yeah was, you know, saw a lot of um, domestic shit that I shouldn't have. Mo- most of the stuff between them was okay, but it was always heated. And there was always dramas and, yeah. you know, escalations, but it was all normally mum's other boyfriends that would be, you know. Yeah. You know, I remember being like 13 and ripping a towel rack off, you know, and fucking chase this dude out the door, ready to party with my man tits out. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just, you know, a lot of a lot of alcohol and yeah, drugs right. and shit floating around that I was probably saw a lot of shit that kids shouldn't. Yep. Did that like was did that feel normal to you? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That, that was, was just that, that was, was, just that was normal. And that was um probably like a, a big part of um my mental health journey was the fact that like I saw all of that shit as just normal. Um Yeah. So, like, every night I was at the pub, like, after school. It wasn't, like, go home, do your homework, whatever. It was, like, no, nah, mum's on the piss. Yeah. So, we'd be at the pub, drink piss. Like, I'd be, like, fucking hustling drunks out of money and shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and, like, to me, it was fun yeah. at the time. You know, I wasn't in danger or anything. It was, you know, to me, that was just how we did shit. But the, yeah. the mindset side of that was I just thought, well, I don't have to apply myself to school. I don't have to do anything. These guys are having a fat time. Like, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that was my bar. Fuck yeah. Sort yeah. of, yeah, something to, something to reach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah something to sort so of. So, like, I never, I never had that, you know? Yeah, yeah. right, eh? So, what was, like, what was. So, your dad now, that's, that's your dad in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, they weren't together as. No, 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 the, no, they were when we were real young. And yeah. then, yeah, I think grade, fuck, grade, grade two, started grade two. Is when Mum moved us back from Cairns, so they sort of split up then, and yeah, they had, they did sort of have another couple of cracks, yeah, here and there, yeah, uh, just didn't work out, you know. They're friendly enough reason. now, though, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they get along yeah. like a house. And That's what like I Dad, of, Dad yeah. drove her to a date the other week. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's, um, yeah, 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 and they've always got along, like, um, yeah, you right. know, since they split up. They'll, yeah, just one of those things that just fucking didn't work. Yeah, but they, yeah, yeah. No, hundred percent. I. I but yeah, I've got my own, got my own story with that. With it's sort of, that, but. Uh, it's sort of weird, you know. I don't, don't want to rag on either of them, to be honest, because I've sort of come to terms with yeah where I'm at. But yeah, 100%. it's sort of bizarre, like the the shift, like when we were kids. It was, all, like I said, all relatively um, humble enough. It was like mum had us during the week, 
and dad had us on the weekends because mum in hospitality that's when she worked nights and all that sort of year yeah. so um, but dad would still swing through pick us up at school every morning but yeah it was those weeknights you know mum be on the piss or the drunk boyfriends would come over or fucking whatever was going on and um that she was sort of the problematic one then and then obviously as i got a bit older i had some shit go down with a house um and it was like the the shift house. from good parents like mum was good and dad was well mum was shit dad was good and then yeah shit turned around um, yeah right so yeah i got um you know talked into going halves in a house oh, out here yeah. and then after a while of paying it off went to get another loan and old love was like oh just have a look and she's like oh you've 20 grand in arrears and i'm like fucking nah like check out my pay like you'll see it's coming out every every fortnight and then she was like oh yeah it is but it's not going to the house it's going in here so got stitched up there and um didn't talk to me old man for a while after that and yeah just went about my own business yep. yeah yeah so, i can understand that bit of a journey but like i said i just thought most of that shit was normal yeah it wasn't until yeah like I'm 30, not even 35 yet, but I've got to say that probably the last four years it's been like, oh, hang on a minute. That's actually not how shit should go down. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can sort of understand that in a way, not from experience, but just from an outsider's perspective. And like you hear it, you hear it. It goes, it's something people battle with all the time. Uh, just like it, for some people it just feels normal. Yeah. And... Yeah, I, I, I like to think I'm smart enough to comprehend it, even though I haven't lived that myself. But it's um pretty shit ass when you think about it. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. But it's I think it's Phil, Phil's character, mate. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's yeah. So I, was looking for <laughs> I think Phil's, that's why I was Phil's so character. That's why I was so funny in high are, school. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're a fucking cracker in high school. Yeah. Still are, but. Well, we'll we'll get there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's you know, like a, you know, a, that, that like we'll get to it later on with the um, when, when we sort of go down the rabbit hole of the mental health. But I don't know if like do I look what do I do oh, with my hands? Yeah, you look at the camera. Yeah. You, you can, um, you look at me. Look at the camera. You look wherever you want. It's yeah. You, like we'll get to it a bit down the track, but it, it's not as if it's not as if a specific event occurred that threw me into a spiral or anything like that. No, no, so no I wasn't, just a matter of small. I wasn't lost or things, anything like that. It was just just yeah. existing was kind of strange. Yeah. And then um yeah, as we as we go down the rabbit hole, you know, like I will we'll sort of nut out why yeah things were the way they were. But so what um so what sort of what was what was like adult life like after high school? Like what did you like Oh, I see. The, you know. I, rem- I, I remember. I remember you in high school. Like I said, like I, everyone knew Jordo. Yeah. Everyone knew Jordo in high school and outside of high school. But I know I myself. It wasn't up until what f- few years ago when yeah. we shaved your head before your wedding. No one. I didn't know Jacob Jordan. I knew no. Jordo, but I didn't know Jacob. No, and that, that was that, that, that's another huge part of it. Like I just said, I was experiencing a bit of that. Jacob versus Jordo today. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, <laughs> though probably up until I was, probably until I actually had my my episode. To be honest, there was yeah, still there was there was Jordo there. Um, yeah. And well, I just ran a bit of a mark. Why don't, why don't you lead us into that if that's something you're comfortable talking about? Oh um, well, I'll answer the question first, I suppose. But I was, yeah, you know, yeah. um, didn't really give much of a fuck to be honest. Like I just. Thought my shit didn't stink and didn't care who knew it. And then if I made you uncomfortable, then that was your fault. Yeah. Um, didn't yep. really, you know, I was working in hospitality and um, management at a few joints and, um, you know, people would always come in and test it. And because I was always smaller, they'd obviously always yeah. put the pressure on. And yep. I started dealing with that how I do um, yep. and had a good time doing it and just had this persona of thinking i was a fucking cool cunt yeah taking drugs and yeah. drinking piss and yeah was there was there a point in was there a point in life where like you realized you were smaller and it was kind of like oh now's 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 the time i gotta let them know i'm not as small no not no, really it wasn't, it was, wasn't a point. It was, it was always a, like oh my old man was a, sort of a little fella too but he was ripped back in his day yeah um 
And he always just told me not to take shit. Yeah. Sort of thing. And, you know, I'd never go out of my way to start shit. I mean, there were times when I was I had a gut full. Yeah. Piss and drugs and yeah. just thought, well, fuck it, why not? Yeah. Um, but most of the time it was just, you know, people would try and stand over you, so I'd just let them know that they couldn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hundred percent. No, yeah. I, I I agree with that. Like, but you can't let people stand over you. And I, I had a hard time with that through fucking school and whatnot. And yeah, it's a it's a tough one. Yeah. But it was always yeah, um, you know, like you know, my uncle um, is a bit of a weapon, um, a bit, of, a bit of a boxer, and just an all around scallywag. Yep. Um, but you know, he he was always, he always sort of like, oh, you just don't have it in you. Like, I was never the aggressor. Yeah, but yeah, I was very reactive. Don't need and, to be the aggressor yeah. to to react. So, yeah, um, but yeah, it was just you know one of those things. You know, a bit of a rat bag. I was you know on the piss. So I had a lot of mates who played silly buggers and you know rolled in a lot of crowds, and a lot of those people went off the rails a little bit. So I was sort of I was in in enough to take part in a lot of the silly activities, but I would always managed to keep a foot out because I didn't. Yeah. It, it wasn't the lifestyle I wanted, but I sure yeah. as hell had fun playing the game. If that makes sense, you know? yeah. yeah. What are we? What are we talking in that aspect? We're we talking like oh, club stuff, or oh yeah, yeah, not club stuff. No, just um, you know, silly billies, rat, rat bags. Yeah, just yeah. rat bags. Yeah, you know, enough. moving moving gear or yeah. um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, right. I doing that sort of jazz. Yeah. What um feel feel free to sidestep this if you want. Um, what sort of stuff were you moving? Like what sort of quantity? Like what? Oh, how, how big of a how big of a scale are we talking? Not major, not major just, shit. Just, local, just little shit. But it was stuff. always yeah, yeah. You know, st- just stand on the ones that come sort of big note. Yeah, yeah. Just be like, oh, well, that's ours now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, nothing major. It's you know one of those things. It's not something that I um like enjoy talking about her and then it was just no. like it wasn't even like a thing it was just like oh it's just just what it just you know what I mean? yeah, it wasn't, yeah. wasn't like a big deal yeah. we didn't fucking go around posting shit on myspace back then no thinking we're, no. Thinking we're mad cunts who we just you know that, was, that just, was just uh, friday and saturday night just playing silly yeah. buggers and you know yeah, pretty much right stay right. awake from wednesday to fucking saturday and then do it all again you know just yeah and then like that sort of died that died off around sort of 21, 22, but there was still a good few years where I still had that mentality. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. No, I get that. So how did that, was was that sort of the sort of stuff that led to like your episode or was that just? No, like, no, it's unrelated to be honest. Yeah, right. Um, eh? Yeah, I'd, um, I'd sort of settled down a little bit. I still had that fucking... Um, a little, little bit of um, aggression, I guess, or that, yeah, you know. With a fire in the belly. You. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Just had a chip on my shoulder yeah. um, about something. And um, I think I'd been with my missus for like 12 months, maybe a bit longer at that point. Yeah, right. Um, <coughs> and, um, yeah, I, I just just had nothing, had nothing going on uh, at the time. And that, that's sort of what. I was talking about before um i didn't really have a drive so i finished school mm. um but i didn't go to uni i never got a trade all, all i did was fucking sell drugs and work in bars and yeah do that sort of shit and then it got to that point where you know i met shannon i was, I was actually a boss um oh yeah at bartlett's when we met so she was 18 and i was a 24 year old manager just creeping um <laughs> <laughs> but we um yeah, got together and we were together for a while and I'd sort of ended up moved, um, ended up moving back in my old man's place. So after all the shit went down, we didn't talk for ages. We formed a bit of a relationship again and yeah. like I was smoking an ounce and a half of weed a week. Oh, uh, but like between the two of us, we, it was just, we just punched cones and Yeah, that's, e- still, exist. that's still a bit. Yeah, oh, mate. Between two years. Like you've got to have morning cones and then we're like, <coughs> oh, I better make a coffee. So you go get a coffee and punch a few more and then if yeah. you had a job to do, you had to go and have a couple, then get the tools ready and then come back and have a couple before you can start. Like you can't just go out there and no, not, you know? No. So it was just life. Um, and it just sort of, 
I just sort of realized that that was it. Well, I, I thought that was it. Oh, this is, yeah. I'm just existing. Um, I'm going through this fucking cycle. I've got nothing to my name. I've got, you know, um, n- no, nothing to my name and I've got nothing to get me anything. Like I'm just, yeah, um, bottom of the barrel sort yeah. of shit. I'm stuck in this rut. I can't fucking get away from anyone. Like I just needed to be out of the environment. And, like I remember sort of like, like I never, never tried to, um, properly, you know, hang myself or anything, but yeah, I remember trying to fucking just throw myself on the, off the bed yeah. with something and, and yeah. always, always end up getting back up. But I just remember just crying all night, just wanting to fucking end it because it's like, I just hated existing. Like I was just, but just a waste of oxygen. Um, yeah. and it would have been better off without me. And sort of where I was at, it's had nothing, it was going nowhere. And no, I think yeah. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of us out there out there that understand that feeling of just feeling like you're just existing for no reason, and you don't. No one wants to exist for no reason. No, no that was and that's like the hardest part of it too, is because there's there's so many people that have <coughs> shit going on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think around that same time. Um, Good mate of mine, uh, who I worked with, Dane Ladbrook, um, was in a major accident um, on his way back from work, and he lost his um, left arm and leg in the accident. And I like, I remember, um, and he's got a good sense of humour about it. But um, he'd have to. Be I, I haven't, I haven't said this yours. to him, but um, <laughs> like, I remember thinking, like, you know, at least he's got something to fucking be sad about like i'm just a miserable cunt for no reason and i just felt worse yeah yeah, yeah. because it's like a, you know i look no, at this, i can you know. completely resonate with that like you you yeah it's like, you oh, see I'm a bit someone sad. that's yeah you see someone that's you know worse off than you are but you feel shit and selfish because you because you're upset about yourself and yeah it makes you feel worse and yeah no, I, I i get that completely that's sort of what i really wanted to do this with you for is because you know there's a lot of people that go through some horrid shit, whether it be, you know, divorces and get the kids taken away. Yeah, yeah. Fucking major shit that causes a problem. But there's also a lot of blokes out there that just don't feel like they're good enough. And the hardest part about that is you see all the other shit and you don't want to speak up because you're just whinging. Yeah. You're just a fucking whinger. Nothing's wrong. No. You know. That's right. Everyone everyone has their own fucking battle, whether it's whether it's a tiny little battle in their head or it's a huge big custody battle. The, the the depression that comes with either of those battles can be just the same as you know making you feel worthless and wanting to take your own life and that kind of shit. Yeah. It fucking happens, and you can't downplay your own feelings because someone has it worse. Like it just yeah. you, you've just got to you've got to learn to understand. Your subconscious is just a dog. Like oh, it just, absolutely. It just sniffs you Snap out back. and then just keeps you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this fucking eats at you. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Certainly, certainly know that feeling, as I think most of our listeners probably will. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. So, what after after that was was that the episode or was yeah? Oh no. That so that went on for I don't know probably a few months where I was just yeah. I think it was just this infinite loop of just fucking bongs and fucking hating life and yeah um it was sort of a rough it, it sort of spiraled a bit towards the that probably that first 12 months of me and shannon being together where um had a mate a fellow scallywag um he was in a bit of strife and needed somewhere to go so i was like oh well, he'll move in with us uh, we moved in shannon and i moved in together after only a couple of months just because the people she was living with yeah. broke up and moved out and she didn't want to move home and couldn't afford rent. So I was like, well, I want to fucking get out of here. So, um, and then I had old mate living with me and the fucked up. Like, I'm, yeah, I, I always thank her for hanging with me for a lot of this shit. But the fucked up thing was I'd leave her in bed on her own because I'd sit in the garage. And I wasn't a big drinker, but I, when he was there, I'd sit in the garage drinking with him because I felt bad that he was lonely. Yeah. And I was trying to be there for him. Meanwhile, I fucking left her. Yes. Yeah. You know, just sort of gross shit like that. Yeah. Like it just wasn't attentive or 
you know, I thought I was looking out for him, but like, yeah, yeah, fucking hell, yeah. man. Like, he's not going to blow me. He's not going to fucking look after me when I'm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, she's <clears throat> yeah, and yeah, that that sort of went as you know, he'd get on the piss and we'd fucking have a blue here and there, and yeah, as you do because I, you know, this you, know, you and her, me and old mate, you and him, me and yeah, I, yeah. you know, because he just get pissed and cranky and. I've got a mouth, so know, <laughs> especially especially when someone's pissed and cranky, yeah. Um, and yeah, that sort of you know got the shits, and that's when I ended up moving back into my old man's place, and yep. she moved back home because yeah, I think I I started going through a bit of anxiety at that point, and that that's why I wasn't working. Um, I was yeah. getting to the point where I like pull up at work, and like I I didn't have a license, so I was a bit of a home just a fucking useless cunt. I never got my license until I was. I think 25, and I think that was like post episode, even. Yeah, right. So, um, you know, she'd drive me to work, and then I'd sit in the car, fucking hyperventilate and cry because I can't go to work. Yep. You know, meanwhile, she's busting her ass at work and providing for us. And, yeah. Um, yeah. The, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> she's red hot, absolute trooper. Um, yeah. Oh, you, yeah, you, yeah, you've snagged a good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, give you that. And so the episode itself, I don't even know. Look, I, I just had, I just had started having episodes um, in terms like I'd just be fucking angry, yeah, just stamping through the house, fucking with Pantera on or something. Just fucking, it was, it was like it's probably, it's probably the autism that I'm not diagnosed with, but I definitely <laughs> feel it. And it was just fucking having a bit of a stim. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But just fucking raging and just turning into a cunt and like no one could talk to me. Everything like I was just manipulating and twisting everyone's words to suit the narrative that I wanted at the yeah. time. Like I just wanted to be mad. So yeah, let's 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 be mad. Yeah. Um, and then it got to a point where one day I was just a wreck, and I, I just remember it, I was in the shower, just in tears, and um, my old boy carried me up to mental health. And they're like, oh, no, you can't come in here. You've got to go to ED. Then you go to the emergency department. Oh. And then, yeah, so I got, got pretty lucky in that sense because um, there's this, he's the head of emergency department now. He's this um, South African fellow, Cornet Esther Husen, um, up at the base. Yeah, right. And he is the goodest cunt. He is very Jesus-y. Yeah, he's right very, up. very devout um, Christian, I think. Yeah, okay. um, and like he sat with me for <coughs> fucking hours, man. There was a, a dude oh, yeah. from the acute care team who came and sat with me and had a chat. Yeah. And um, yeah, Cornet sat with me for like four hours, I think. And we were just chatting. Like he was, he was talking to me about, you know, Christ and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And I'm like, fuck, taking the piss a little yeah. bit. Like, like good. Yeah. It was, it was really good. Like, I, yeah, it was a, probably a bit of abrupt and rude and stuff at first. Um, but he just, he probably sat would there have patiently. Yeah, that. yeah. He just sat there patiently and we were yeah. just having a yarn and um Yeah, that that was sort of the the start of the start of the journey was yeah, dealing with him and then basically I, I didn't work. I got written off. I was on disability for like six months on suicide yeah, watch, right so on. it was just stay at home. Yeah. I can and then that that's when I started the cycle of trying to find people to help. And yep. That was the challenge because I was still stuck in this. Yeah. Fucking hole at my dad's place. Yeah. Fucking smoking bongs with nowhere to go and nothing doing. Yeah. So you were still stuck in that after after after, the, after sitting with old mate. Yeah, yeah it, was, you, it was still. I was, I was I was in the same environment. In fact, like I was in the environment, but I was trying to improve. If that makes yeah, sense. So, yeah. like the days were shitter, but I felt like I was. The, the, like the wheels were turning and that's when we started working out, you know, appointments at um, mental health to go and see a psych and yeah. just kicking off the wheels in that sense. And that was, um, there. Yeah, that was another decent journey. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. So what was, was that, uh, again, feel free to sidestep this if, you, if it's not something comfortable talking about but what was the episode what was the was that was that what you were talking about before yeah i was oh, just that done. was yeah like I was you were done fucking, yep 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 gotcha. i was just ready to fucking stop myself and it was lucky that it was the middle of the day and everyone was home yeah so i wasn't doing anything yeah, and that's why i was like 
sort of ended up in the cold shower. I think I don't remember much. I yeah. probably think Dad put me in it, to be honest, to try and do a bit of a reset. Yeah. But I just remember being on the deck when he came in, took me up. So, yeah, a bit of a, a bit fucking rough. Yeah. Um, still felt, still felt like dying for a long time. But that was sort of the the thing that kick started it. Um, and then the next, however long was was it probably twelve months was a journey before I even started to get any real help. So. I think yeah. probably the first three months, I just fucking sat in my own misery. But yeah, you know, just it was like one day at a time sort of thing, and just being a miserable cunt. And then, um, the like you keep waiting for this fucking just someone to flick a switch, yeah. like this magical off switch, or yeah. you you someone's going to say something, or someone's just going to rock up and pull you out of yeah and- out of the rut, but. Yep. It's just you, and it takes right. a little bit to realise that you've just got to survive long enough to. I completely to work that out. Understand that, and that was, I think it was that 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 day that I'd gone and seen you when I was having my meltdown. I think that was that week so after I after I you you finally sort of pulled me out of my headspace a little bit, and I was able to think clearly. And then, yeah, it was that week that I realised I've I've got to do something. Mm. I, I can't wait. Some no one's going to fix it for me. Yeah, you know? and that was yeah. It's, if you can learn it quickly, it's a good thing. But fucking, you know, you like you just cling on to this hope. Yeah, you know what I mean. And like, <clears throat> I remember thinking as a kid, like I remember thinking like because mum worked in pubs and stuff, right? So there was like, and this is like fucking stupid, but like I'd be like seven or eight or whatever, and I remember like she had all these. Like there was this old bird who used to go play the pokies and she'd be like putting hundies in and just like pumping it out and like had this ridiculous place up on like right on top of Agnes Street, this huge, biggest house I'd ever seen. Yeah. And her and mum were like besties and I was like, oh, maybe when she fucking dies, she'll give stuff to mum and then then, we'll, then we won't be so shit anymore. Yeah. Like I just like you I just had this hope that little, something like life yeah. will be good. You know, like I think I spent, whew, I think from when I was like, seven until 15 i shared a room with dad under nana's house like you know yeah. i just thought fucking like the movie something's going to come along like i was just clinging on to this hope the whole time to, yeah 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 did you was was that a conscious thing or was that just sort of like a no i think it was just, just a, like i think but like i said at start i think there might have been some shit that i've sort of blacked out in my childhood that i thinking shit peachy and I think a lot of those feelings come from that when I was younger like, yeah like even now something will happen and I'll be like oh fuck I think I, I might say I have an opinion on something and then yeah. I'll sort of go no I don't actually that's just fucking dad's or that's just whatever got jammed down my throat like yeah yeah, yeah uh, and it takes me to say it to go huh, what yeah yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've certainly I've certainly know what you're talking about mm. yeah. like yeah you get so uh what's the word you get so caught up in what other people uh, uh have opinions on and what other people believe and you know that sort of stuff and you start to develop your own or you start to develop that same belief just because of what yeah someone else is like some shit i don't about. even know about yeah couldn't even tell you about the yeah. topic but i fucking feel like that about it and, yeah, and passionate too oh uh, yeah i did you know it with so much passion. <laughs> yeah i, I yeah, understand yeah. that yeah yeah, so that was, yeah, yeah. That, you know, there's a there was a lot of stuff. Like I said, you know, yeah, we we used to like I got home to see mum one weekend and it's fucking blood up the stairs, up the fucking handrail, and old mate had obviously given over what for, um, but just lots of little shit like that. That was just a part of everyday fucking life that I didn't realise until I was older. Yeah, um, but yeah, the. I'll keep going, I suppose, on the journey, but yeah, yeah, um, go for it. Yeah, it's just as you talk, sorry, as you talk, right. you know, shit pops in that you just yeah, think yeah. of, and it's like, oh, that would have been good 20, 15 minutes ago when we were on that fucking topic. Um, <laughs> ah, that's all right, but um, like the, the other big aspect of that, that mental health journey that's something that anyone that's listening that's tried to get help and has been burnt, so to speak, yep. um. I think I went through four different psychologists. I um I tried to fight this little fucker at um the actual mental health 
public mental health place. Yeah. Um, I went in for like just like an assessment. We were just sort of talking and um, two of them sat across from me and as I started talking, they started laughing, yeah, like right. whispering something and chuckling yeah. and I just saw red. Yeah. I can rip my shirt off, kick the table. I was coming yeah. for him and Shannon got me. So I fucking storm outside and had some choice words and then I walked back inside and apologised to the reception lady because she was lovely. <laughs> she was like, you're right, sweetheart. Here's the rest of your shirt. Fucking off I went. Um, but the, like, I shouldn't the, laugh. I shouldn't uh, laugh. I'm not, la- I'm not <laughs> laughing. I just, uh, I'm laughing because. Oh, I'm- but like in saying that, what a fuckhead. Who does that? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, not, oh, well, I mean, who laughs at someone, but like, fuck, grow up. Yeah. Like, that's right. Yeah. Anyway, I was a bit silly. Um, so, yeah, look, just wasn't having a win. And like every time you'd be like, oh, I've got another appointment, you'd get this sniff of hope. And then you'd walk in and, um, like this lady goes, all right, so you're feeling anxious and depressed. Yes. Uh, what sort of music do you listen to? And I was like, here we go. I was like, oh, anything, you know, I listen to Metallica, I listen to Pantera, I listen to Biggie Smalls, I listen to Pink Floyd, I just yeah. anything that's anything. good, not country, I'm not built that no, way. No, no. I'm not no, built that not way. A, but not a country person. Country and classical, anything except for bloody Wheeler Walker Jr. I'll throw a bit of that on. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, anyway, so I've said, you know, listed a few bands and she's like, oh, and do you think that could be a part of the problem? So I just got up and walked out. Oh, like, yeah, nah. I was like, here's your, here's your 200 bucks. Fucking don't call me. I'll, yeah. I'll call you. I'll have my people call your people. Don't call me. I'll call you. <laughs> yeah. So I got out of there and uh, it was actually a psychiatrist. So my old boy's got bipolar. So yeah, he yeah, was, remember, um, he was just an that. angry, angry cunt when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, like I remember. I remember. Was it diagnosed when you were a kid? No, 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 he was no, he was just pissed. Yeah. Um, like yeah. pissed off. Yeah. Uh, like I remember just the overwhelming anxiety on a Saturday night when he's coming home from work. Like yeah. and like I've you know, I've got I've got floggings and stuff, um, as a as a kid, but like he didn't punch me in the face or anything when I was fucking No. A teenager. No. But he just the anger, like it yeah. was just fucking intense. And so you'd always just be who am I getting? Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. It was a, uh, it was it was a fucking tough one. So yeah, when we were fifteen, he got diagnosed, and then he was just this fucking giant teddy bear. Once he was medicated and yeah. fucking on that, and so once he had an understanding for yeah, once yeah, he had an understanding on what yeah, when it comes so, on. Yeah. yeah, we went um we went to that psychiatrist, and he was an absolute trooper. Uh, Peter Rofe, his name was, and I think he's written a couple of books and. He was head of mental health up here years and years ago and yep. um, he was fucking cool. He remembered dad straight away. He didn't, I don't even think he charged us for like the first six appointments. Like he was just bulk wheeling it and um, just got the wheels turning. And yeah. like the issue I had was when I like may have had anxiety and depression diagnosed when I was probably 19. Yeah. But the doctor that I went and saw was like, oh, your dad's got bipolar. Try these meds. And like just slapped me on the same shit he was on. And it was like, Risperidone, which is an antipsychotic, um, and citalopram, which is, you know, just an antidepressant sort of thing, but yeah, same yeah, dosage yeah. as him without like just send it. So I was just a zombie for a while and stopped taking that. But yeah, this guy, you know, took me in. We had a few chats and um, got me on, on the lithium, which is fucking unreal. I've been taking that for lithium. Since 20, 2016, I think, is when I started on it. Yeah. I haven't right. changed the dose at all, and it, I'm just fucking cool. Lithium. Sometimes I wish I had that little fire in my belly, but I'm cool. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you can bring that, yeah. that fire in your belly up a little bit. It's, um, it's fucking, it's worked a treat, but, like, he was, he was pretty level. Like, he's like, all right, man, like, your issue is that you've got, you know, you're bipolar, your brain chemicals are out of whack. We need to bring them into balance. If you were smoking all this pot, yeah, no, he's like, I don't give a fuck what you do. If you want to smoke weed, smoke weed. But if you yeah. want help, let's let's do that switch. So, um, and it was a gradual process, but um, yeah, quit yeah, right. quit durries and hooch at the same time. So I was like, heaps of fun to be around for. Oh, I can imagine a little while. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was a, a bit of a mission, and like I said, you know, you have your slip ups and stuff, and I was still in that really shit environment. Yeah, like I was living with, living with dad, it was there, like it was yeah. always there. Yeah. Um, 
I still wasn't working, so I still had that overwhelming feeling of just being a failure. Like I was just sinking, but just clinging onto these little glimmers of hope yeah. of of progress, you know. And and so during that time, um, while I was wallowing in my own self pity, um, Shannon was working her ass off, so she was working two jobs, and she ended up buying a house. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, she's incredible. So, yeah, she worked her ass off. She ended up buying a house and um, I moved in there with her and that sort of got me out of my environment. Like, that was my ticket. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, and up until probably even when even when we moved in there, I didn't really have I, – I avoided anything to do with her family as much as possible because I just didn't want them to see – you what? didn't want to see that person. I, I didn't want, yeah, didn't want yeah, exactly right. Person, yeah. You know, because I think, um, well, actually, I know, um, you know, her mum's even said that up until the day that I proposed, she prayed every night that Shannon would come home to her. And then the one night she didn't, she got a call the next day to say that I'd pop the question. Yeah, right. So, yep. yeah, we're, we're tight now. We're homies. Yeah. Um, wow. But I was just. And a lot of it's just because I kept it hidden, right? Like they, yeah, yeah. They, they probably, um, they probably would have thought I was a bit of a grub, but at least they would have known and seen the real me. But instead, they just saw a shadow. And yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I've met him once at Winston's birthday, mm. but I, I, confident in saying, bro, they're, they're pretty proud of you. Mm. Like, even seeing like just the stuff on Facebook and that sort of stuff, like I think, yeah, yeah. I think there's a fair bit of pride there. Oh, don't know if the camera will see it, but I've got uh, Donna. Yeah, oh, oh, got my mother-in-law's oh, name tattooed on my leg. That's awesome. I'm not gonna. Have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to not let my mother-in-law see this. I'm gonna be in trouble for not having her. No, uh, it's um, that's great. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So like, look, we've like obviously we've glazed over a lot, like the the days the the individual days or the weeks or whatever it's yeah. it still sucked ass but oh, the yeah. thing for me was not like everyone's like oh see, you know you always hear talk, people talk about setting goals and i'm not saying that that's like at the moment i'm going through a bit of a moment where i am doing that um yeah but when you're in that rut it's not a big picture situation no it's no, just you can't look at it as a big picture no and it, it was needs just, to just be sort of day by day yeah and, and that was it Build those habits. If I if I habits. got to bed, yep. my, my target was to get to bed. Yeah. So if I got into bed, happy days, and then I wake up the next morning, I'll do it all again. Something. Um, it's funny. Uh, an old boss. Um, back when I was I was down at the salt works, and I was just you know a little fucking speed head and um, a bit of a bit of a grub. Um, rock up for work when I felt like it sort of thing and oh, yeah. I had a bit of shit going on. That's when the, the shit with the house was kicking off and yeah. you know, it was like 2011 or something. Um, I ended up, I got into a blue with the old man at, in Gladstone. I don't remember. I sort of blacked out, but, I, I, you know, it was him and his mate and they're obviously mm. the two oldest and toughest people in Gladstone um, at the time. And I was like, Phew. so, you know, mouthing off as you do. and. Um, yeah, I remember old mate held me and dad gave me a couple and I sort of just fucking threw him a drink to the ground and give him a bit of a spray and walked off. And um, I rang this dude, my boss, and he drove to Gladstone. Him and his missus got in the car and drove to Gladstone, picked me up, walked me home. Wow. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll always, always remember him for that. Um, for, those, for those that don't know, Gladstone's about probably an hour, hour ten yeah. away from where we are locally. Yeah. It was, and it was good. Like, they drove me, dropped me home. Um, I had no recollection of the car ride. I probably just snored, yep. um, probably big-noted myself a little bit because I was full of piss and thought I was un unbeatable. <laughs> but, um, you know. I'd blame you if you didn't. <laughs> but he, um, I had a chat to him and he, something he said, the point of this was something that he said to me was, you know, the sun will come out tomorrow and just keep yeah. doing what you're doing and, Sun will come out tomorrow, and that just stuck with me like through all of it. And I've seen so since I moved back to Rocky last year, I actually bumped yep. into him at Woolies and pulled him oh, aside yeah. and had a bit of a moment with him. And he, he'd like to, he probably doesn't even remember the conversation, but it's something that's stuck with me for 15 years not 15, but 
yeah. 13. Yeah, close enough. Yeah. Yeah, right. And that's the, I guess that's the point is the sun will come out tomorrow and that was my target was get to bed. Get to bed. Sun will come out sunrise. tomorrow, start again. And then, like I said, yeah, it was sort of three months of wallowing in self-pity and then Shannon got the house and sort of moved in there and, um, you know, it was, oh, well, tomorrow I'll do this and do something on the house and then, oh, I'll do this. and Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I saw a, a mate of mine put something up and said he was um, – Started to do a bit of Muay Thai and I was like, okay. Yeah. And then started getting out of, like, I started getting out of the house. I started going, doing a bit of training and then, and just bit by bit, there was little things to, to look forward to. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. And that's, that's that whole, yeah. When you, when you're saying like where people talk about goals and stuff, that's, that's the whole thing with setting goals is you, set yourself an overwhelming goal it's going to feel impossible to reach it won't be impossible to reach but you set those little goals day by day it's just it's one foot in front of the other yeah. and eventually you're going to reach you just keep putting that one foot in front of the other and you're going to get to where you want to be but and that will and that's the thing in that mindset is <laughs> even a week if i was to say oh by the end of the week i'm gonna yeah go and do this and <laughs> fuck you yeah. And then, then you just hate yourself more because you haven't because you done, haven't it. done yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like I said, like I, I think, I think, legitimately, the first three months of it was just get to bed. Yep. There was nothing else other than get to bed. And, um, you know, tried to try to be as present as I could with Shannon, and like we we just have like date nights at home or whatever, yeah. or, and do you know do yeah. things with each other, but yeah, you know, still wasn't game to go out in public and yep. do too much in that aspect. Um. Yeah, yeah no, I get. So. I get that. I get. I get like that now. Like, I, I. I struggle going to you know certain family barbecues or well, not so much family barbecues, but certain you know friends barbecues or birthday parties and that sort of stuff. It's kind of just like yeah. if I'm not feeling it, it's kind of like I, my my brain almost goes, "No, you're not feeling it. Don't go." Yeah, and it's just it can be a fucking struggle to to. Lift yourself up and do yeah, that. yeah. Oh, like I need to, I need to know that, that that I've got a comfort person. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. if Shannon's stuck talking to whoever over here, I need to know that I've got a rebound. Yep. Um, and funnily enough, so the 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 funniest thing was um, my first outing after it all was Shannon's work party, and Shannon worked with um, a girl who is married. She married. Uh, remember Josh Waterson? Yeah, and he was yeah. always like. Super quiet, whatever. Yeah. So, like, my first outing, we've gone to this work there, and I'm like, oh, get fucked. Like, I don't know these people. I'm a piece of shit. You know, this isn't going to go well. Yeah. And then, anyway, I walk in, there's like Josh. So, we both sat there, like, he's not a, he's not a talker, this dude. He's, no, he's no, pretty Josh quiet. Is, yeah. um, and we, like, sat next to each other, and we, you know, we probably said 50 words to each other, like, throughout the whole night. And then he's oh, like, Steph's texting Shannon saying like, oh, Josh had such a great time talking to Jacob. And I was like, yeah, it was awesome. Like, <laughs> we didn't do fuck all. We, but we were such just, a good time. We were just in our safe place. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We were, we were sweet. Um, but, yeah, no, that, um, like, th those, that, those feelings are still here. Oh, you know, even the same, the same as the feeling yeah. of sometimes just not feeling it. Do you know what I mean? There's no. Yeah. And, again, like, that, that was the big reason for me wanting to come and have a chat was because it's not like again there was no event it was fucking no. hated hated yeah. being around yeah and that, and that I've, yeah i feel like there's a lot of people in the same boat that probably don't say anything i think that's the thing it's not weak to speak and i think a lot of people don't because they feel like there's nothing to talk about 100 percent. see it used yeah. to be the stigma of like men don't cry and all that sort of stuff yeah. it's not so much that now people don't speak up because they feel like they're they feel like their battle isn't significant to yeah, yeah. someone else's. And that's one of the one of the biggest fucking things. Like at the end of the day, if you're fucking struggling, just fucking reach out. It doesn't matter what you're struggling with. Like that's the hardest. Yeah. It's the hardest thing to and look, I like I, I as much as I preach that, I was very much a, a victim of that myself. Yeah. And you know, I didn't reach out for help. My reach out for help was putting something on Facebook and you happen to 
see it and yeah. Oh, fucking driving around Rocky, looking, <laughs> looking for Jordan, looking for Jordan, <laughs> fucking. Yeah. Was that before or after the Sunrise incident? I think it was before. That was before. Yeah, yeah that was definitely before yeah. the Sunrise incident. Yeah. yeah. But um, well, well, let's let's touch on let's touch on that. Well, let's, well, I'll, when I'll I do the when I do the editing, I'll, I'll try <laughs> I'll try and edit the um the seven news clip into it. But. <laughs> Um, so the, the joy is, yeah, the joyous part of that. So that was my, my first job after it all. Oh, really? Went, yeah. I went back to work at just at the bottle um, at the pub yeah. and, um, uh, and right. like limited, like I was just like few hours, like let's just do a few days and, and it was pretty sweet. Um, uh, like I said, I was training with a mate. I was, um, probably putting in about three hours a day at that time, um, with the Muay Thai as well. Not that you'd know because still can't kick, um, <laughs> But I was getting really fit and, and just exerting myself and having a fat old time and um, that gave me a lot more confidence to, to go to work. And I like even even then and even towards the end, like I still remember pulling up at work years later and getting sweaty palms knowing I was walking into just having to put on a face and talk to people, you know, like yeah. in hospitality. Oh, yep. Um, yep. But oh, anyway, yeah. Hospitality, so, that would be a, yeah, that'd, that'd be a game changer for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was rough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was working in the bottle oh and minding my own business. And um I was, I was at the Mac Texan actually fucking about. I think I think there was I think there was a fight, there was like boxing on or there was something on, so I'm out the back watching the video and then I just heard just a little bit of a shuffle. It was not far off wind, winding down. I had a bit of a shuffle, so I walked out. And I could see some turkey on the other side of the like he was up on the bench. Mm. Um, on the other side of the counter, and he's I trying know the to, video yeah, well. Yeah, trying to open the thing up, and I saw him, and so I was just like, "Get out of town!" So I was like, "What are you fucking doing?" And as I've gone to grab him, he sort of dropped off and just gone, like pinned the ears back. He was out. Yeah. And then I saw something out of the corner of my eye, and I spin around, and there's this dude in the corner. And he's like, "This is a robbery!" And I was like, "No, it isn't." So <laughs> I was like, "Fucking come on, then." And he sort of, yeah, we sort of size each other up a little bit and like it was just that argument between instinct and brain where I was like mop the floor with this cunt and you can, what hand is the knife in? Like you can see yeah, the, the yeah. fucking battle. Yeah. Um, and he didn't want to use it either. Like he was holding, no, you it, can he tell was he holding didn't. it way back. You can and, really tell he did like, His mate had this little piss hand fucking butterfly knife thing. It looked like, it looked like, yeah, it looked like something right <laughs> off your fucking keychain. So he's the one that's legged it and just left old mate for dead. And anyway, yep. yeah, I sort of grabbed old mate and same thing. I was threw him on the counter and then I was like, I'll yeah. throw some knees. And every time I thought of that, I was like, oh, like didn't want to lift my leg into his blade or anything. And yeah. Yeah. So he ended up fucking, he jumped the fence and sort of looked at me again. And I was like, fucking get out. And so I pinned it back. But that was my fucking 15 seconds of fame anyway. Yeah. yeah. It was you just got, well timed. You, you got on Sunrise. You got to you got to talk to Sammy. So no, I didn't get to talk to Sammy. This oh, is my didn't. beef. This oh, is my beef with oh, the Channel did. Seven team. Um, so there was actually an outstanding reporter, um, Michael. Um, so he he came and um, and interviewed me, and I had a he came came over home and did the interview, and that was good value. And um, they played the video, and Sam Armitage called me brave. She said that was very brave, but um, that was it, and no Koshi. No, Koshy. No, but meanwhile, fucking old mate with his mullet and teeth missing, but ran down the street and his jocks gets a fucking interview. Yeah. yeah I just, right. I don't think that's good enough. So uh, I've been, I've been a Today Show man about. ever since. Oh, yeah. I don't blame you. Carl, yeah. Carl would have got me on. Oh, oh, Carl stepping over. He would have, yeah. yeah. He, he would have got <laughs> you on for sure. We'll see if we can reenact it one day. Yeah. I'll well, come in, I'll come in the Kamatsu or something. Just yeah, make a bit of a ruckus. Yeah. yeah, no, it was um, a good bit of fun. Yeah. A little bit of fun. It was yeah. one of those things. I was pretty pumped. Yeah. I was pretty pumped for a while afterwards. Yeah, so. oh, I bet you were. Hey, like, and if, if I do get the video on in, in the editing, uh, yeah, you, you can see you can see where you were. You were sizing him up and you were looking for that knife. And it, both of them had the knife, had a knife. And, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy to think that just there's some people that, Fight or flight. Yeah, would have been. There would have been people that would have poked their head out. And gone, oh fuck! Not going out there. And 
oh, look, probably should have. But oh, I just, I just can't. Yeah, at, at at the end of the day, you now that I've got kids, it might be different. Is but yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Now that I've got kids, it might be different. Yeah, even the misses, you know, the, the crime, the way it is. Obviously, for those of you wearing wearing Rocky, you may have seen all the the, the vigilante justice mm. um, shit all over the news. So you yeah. know, crimes are crimes are pretty big thing. And yeah, the misses when before we left Brisbane, I think it was like someone broke into the house, and the mum and father got up and. They went like they they weren't going to fight him. It was a woman, but she like obviously intercepted the criminals and got stabbed and died. Yeah, um, yeah. And so like just all that sort of shit. So Shannon's like, oh, you know, if you hear a noise, please don't go downstairs. And then fucking two hours later, wakes me up and goes, oh, I heard a noise. <laughs> what do you <laughs> what want me to do? do? <laughs> obviously <laughs> going to go, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking spin out. But yeah, um, yeah. That's yeah. It was, uh, I, I, it's it's fucking rampant at the moment. Yeah. It's the youth crime is horrendous. No, like I feel like we did like innocent enough things. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's right. Like I don't, I don't remember trying to break into people's house no, with a knife no, to steal their car or anything. People's but, like, cars and shit. You know, we tie say? tie a can to a cane toad or something and yeah, throw them on the throw roof. It on the roof, and that's what, yeah. Fuck oh that's, right. yeah. It's, no, like. <laughs> You'd, you'd, yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd go running through people's backyards, you know, whether you're running, running from the boys in blue or whatever, mm. and you jump through people's backyards and stuff, but you're not going to go try and break into their no, house to no. steal their cars. Like, even, like, I think you've still got all that fucking underwear you pinched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can have it back one day <laughs> if you want. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's just fucking, it's rampant. Mm. It's... But yeah, so sort of yeah, back on track. Like one, I, I, sort of. I wanted to bring it up before, but you were on a you were on a pretty good roll, so I didn't, didn't want to interrupt you. But I wipe my chin, dribbling shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I don't think it was shit. Um, but with the um, so like, what was it like when you when you went up to um, you went up to mental health and they sent you to ED? Like, what was Oh. What was it like waiting up there? To, to be honest, I was lucky enough that I didn't wait, yeah. if that makes sense. Like I um, I, I presented at the triage and, again, it's all a bit blurry for me because I was in a fucking state. Yeah. <laughs> and I just remember going out the back and sitting on a bed and I think that was probably the difference. You know, they didn't keep me in the fucking waiting room with the meth heads. Yeah. I, I was actually sort of out the back and um, did have my old man with me and mm. – yeah, it's all a bit blurry. Um, to be honest, I just remember chatting with chatting with Corne, um, and he's 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 cross, we've we've crossed paths a lot since at some major milestones. Me yeah, and a big fellow. Just I'm not a re- religious man at all, but I tell you what, it gives him a buzz because he's like, I told you. Um, yeah, you know the the journey of um, uselessness didn't really stop. You know, I started to. Um, venture into work again and um, that's obviously when I started um, well it was after the incident after the the robbery I actually changed I just went to be a labourer at Coxon's yeah that's right Um, and started there and that was sort of the next thing was yeah you know it took a bit of a pay cut and just did a bit of hands on work with those guys and um started working my way up from there and then all of a sudden I was like a leading hand and then supervisor and it was just those little steps yeah. that sort of kept me moving. I was like, oh, yep. fuck, I'm fucking on to something here. And, fuck yeah. Um, so Corne, obviously we had that incident and then I started with Coxons and then as I was working through, became a, a leading hand or a supervisor. I think it was a supervisor at the time for the workshop and then um, – which is scary. Um, I got metal in me. I walked past the well bay just at the wrong time and copped a fucking yeah, right. grinder spark or something and oh. went up to the hospital. And yeah, sure enough, it had been like oh, maybe two years at this point. I think, oh, maybe 18 months yep. since the thing. And I'm waiting there. And yeah, sure enough, Corne comes in to dig the gear out. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure if you remember me, but. I was in here in a bit of a state, and he's like, I do, come for a walk. 
He took me for a walk. He's like, we're in that bed over here. Blah, blah, blah. What the hell? I had a big chat about it and he, yeah, he gave me his email address and yeah, told him wow. said he was going to go and chat to his wife a bit later on and um, yeah, right. pray about it. And I said, you know, I've got my wife and things are going well. And oh, she wasn't my wife then, but got a yeah. girlfriend. Yeah, th yeah, she's still here and things are going well. And um, yeah, at that point, I think we'd started going down. We were trying to have kids. Um, and I think that's when. When we worked out that uh, I couldn't have kids, yeah, so I had to go down right. the IVF route. I think I actually, I think I proposed at that point. Yep. Um, that was yeah, 2016, I think. So we're engaged at that point, and then that's when we we're, you know, going down the IVF road. So we wished us luck for that, and yep, off we went. So yeah, that was a and that like there, the, there's another one that sort of hit me because it was like oh. Yeah, that would have been yeah. a battle in itself. At first, I thought it was like it was my fault from yep. all the shit that I got up to. Yep. Um, but I just don't have the gene. I've never produced a, a swimmer in my life. Wow. Um, so if I knew that when I was 15. Hmm. Yeah. There would, have been some, there would have been some fucking <laughs> loads getting dumped. Um, Fuck. <laughs> like a dump truck, y'all. <laughs> dump truck, um, y'all. But yeah, I found that, that. That was, you know, you just don't feel like a real man. Um, yeah. Which was pretty hard. It was like, oh, fuck. Fuck, I bet it was. Um, and then, yeah, sure enough, we you know, we were going through the IVF stuff and had a win. I think we ended up getting a few embryos. Um, I think we got married in the meantime, so I ran into him after we got married, ran into Cornet after the wedding. Yep. So it's like a couple of big milestones. We bumped into him and he's obviously over the moon that we keep crossing paths. Um, and then same thing, we had Winston, took Winston in the hospital for, for something and yeah. Corne came out and he's oh, yeah, no. all over it. And I lost Dino, a lot of my best mate um, killed himself. Well, that was that, six, that was sort of what I was, I was going to try and touch on yeah. before about, about going up to the ED. Like that's, that was when, when, when you let us know about Dino, like that was, that was, Pretty shit. Like I, I, I wasn't close with Dean. I, I think the last time I saw Dean was um, when you were leaving for Brizzy. When, yeah. When you were moving, yeah. went down in the alleys, and um, you know, every, every time I saw him, you know, you stop and say good day and have a chat and a bit of fucking yahooing and carrying on. But yeah, then when I discovered that he'd gone up to the hospital and they left him waiting there two hours, that was. Well, that's that was, the thing. That was, he, he wasn't even there the two hours. That was just there. their timeline. Oh, that was their timeline. That was like, oh, he checked in here and we've just checked to find him and he's gone. That was the issue. So, yeah, poor cunt walked in and said, oh, I'm going to kill myself. That was what they wrote yeah. down because that's what they had to report to the cops. Yeah. Um, and they just told him to take a seat and he would have just fucking probably would have gone out and had a durry and called them all cunts while he was having a smoke. Yeah. Um, and then just walked off and there. the timeline is basically that he left and did the deed. Yep. And that was about, you know, if they had to just put him out the back, even if they didn't get to him straight away, the fact that he progressed, would, yeah. you know. Yeah. If, yeah, would if, have had to talk to just, someone to walk out. Like, you know, he can't yeah, just leave. They would they have had to have. popped him out, put him on a bed or a chair mm. or something and just, yeah. I think that's yeah. probably one of the biggest flaws in not just the mental health system, but the 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 emergency board up there is, yeah, yeah. That was probably the biggest um, the biggest setback for me was that like I, I've been going real like you know little hiccups like infertility and yeah, hundred um, percent. I, I was doing like I, I still to this day um, don't know how but I was doing really well with work and sort of made something of myself um, there and then got myself into a really good position. I was working at a national level and, you know, life was good. Yeah. They moved me down to Brisbane for a role. I was kicking these goals, but, you know, you, you've always got that sort of imposter syndrome. Well, I do, had that imposter syndrome of, fuck, you're still not good enough. Yeah. Still, but, you know, but I was, it was, yeah, I was able to manage like, it, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it wasn't – it was something that I thought, and that, that's the other thing for anyone – for the listeners at home, um, it's not something that 
you switch off. Whether or not you you uh, fucking twenty years down the track or not, you still have those thoughts. Um, you just know, learn how to manage it, and and you pick up on the cues. Like yep. I know when I'm getting anxious, or and there's times where you don't. And it yeah. does still sneak up on you, but yep. for the most part, you can pick up on it. And that's one thing that um, my wife and I have been really good at is communicating that. Like if I get up and I'm just not feeling it, I'll be like, "Hey, look." Something's not right. Yeah. You know, take five. Let me just take five um, and I'll come and tap in and, you know, I'll go and listen to some music or go for a drive. And, you know, she's the same. If, the, you know, if I get home from work, she's overwhelmed. She's like, bro, 10 minutes. I can't yep. fucking kid. I can't do these kids right yeah. now. You know, and that, that's something we're really good at is communicating when, like in advance, we don't have a blue and then go, hey, my bad. Like we're really good at yeah. picking up on the cues. Um and she picks up on it for me and, and vice versa as well. Like she'll be like, hey, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, it's just something to, to remember. Like don't get disheartened if, you, you know, if you're three months into your journey and you're still having those shit thoughts and you think, fuck, I'm supposed to be getting better. Like, and, and I do. Yeah. I did yeah, for the longest oh, 100%. time. You know, and you, you are. It just doesn't leave you. You just get better at managing it. Yeah. Um, sometimes that's overwhelming to hear in those states, but it, it gets easier. Yeah. And so having that and, and at the time that my wife was about to pop with number two That's when right. when that happened so yeah because shannon wasn't shannon didn't come to the funeral did she yeah oh, yeah she, no she did my I, my, did. my the ceo um drove me home yeah as soon as i got the phone call he i went i went out into the office and my boss was like hey you right and just a mess like yeah. i couldn't get a word out I was like, yeah <laughs> um and yeah the ceo drove me home and it was on a flight that day, same day. We came up, and, um, got it all sorted, and then it wasn't probably until – he helped Dean's mum or Dean's sister. So yeah, Dean's Dean sister. Yeah. Um, trying to organise everything because, yeah, poor Brenda was – and Rick, his, his stepdad, they were just beside himself. And they're like, you know, he, he's got a – I don't want to speak on what was going on, but he's – No, no. He's got his own battles and, you know, similar stuff, you know, ex-wife, custody, just – you know, didn't have a way out in the world to be better off yeah. mentality. Um, and he's a, he's a real spiteful bugger as well. Like, like as soon as they said, oh, go have a seat, he would have been like, I'll fucking show you. Like, yeah. that just would have been yeah, classic Dean. Like, yeah. if he can't, he was, you know, fixing something on his boat motor and he'll break like a little plastic clip. So, he'll take to the motor with a hammer. Like, <laughs> just, like just to teach it a lesson, you know. And, it, yeah, he just would have been. Yeah, it would have been fucking rough. So that was, I, I think I did pretty well. Yeah, at the time, but it was so basically his funeral. Um, his birthday was. Fuck, when was it? His birthday was like three weeks later. Fuck. So it was like his death happened. It was his birth. Um, his funeral. Like three weeks later, it was his birthday. Three days after his birthday, it's Christmas. Um, a month after that, my daughter was born. We were trying to pack up our house to move back up to Rocky. Yeah. Uh, as well. Um, my son, my son's got autism. So he's like, ha like hands on, full oh. awesome dude. But like, if you, oh, he just needs, lovely dude. just needs you. Yeah. So I was just battling myself and just trying to be everything for everyone and yeah. got back home and, I was just fucked, and so I, I, I had to go and started seeing a psych again when I got back. We actually yeah. saw her through. Never found a psychologist while I was dealing with my mental health issues. Um, they're all fucking idiots. But <laughs> when we were dealing with IVF, found this Sheila. Yeah, you have to That's do right. counselling yeah, for, for that. You are remember you telling um, us that. And she is unbelievable. Yeah. Re really, really radar. Um, and just started going and seeing her and talking things out and. Um, that's what I used to spin her and, and even the psychiatrist out was my awareness of it. Like, they're like, you know exactly what's going on. I'm like, oh, no, I just can't fucking beat it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I can oh, tell fuck. you what's yeah. going on. I just yeah. can't get it there. But, yeah, started seeing her again and, yeah, I just needed a breather. And yeah. so I took took a week off, yeah. the stress leave, um, and started to feel a little bit different, Yeah, which was good. But, yeah, it's, um, it's a never-ending never ending battle. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. 
Yeah, no, it's it's sort of yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say I wanted to bring up Dean before, but sort of I said it was just this podcast series is it's all about raw and emotional and I'm glad we get to talk about it because yeah. like we've we've never really much as we talk and hang shit on each other like we don't get to do this no. too often. No, not too often, man. Do the odd it's, coffee and talk about what's going on. Yeah, life, my, well, most of the time that's Winston dictating the conversation. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's good. I love it. But yeah, what um, yeah. if if you can, if this is this sounds cliche. It sounds very podcast cliche, but something I always have sort of thought about. If you could go back and tell your younger self something what would you say oh yeah not where i thought that was going to go <laughs> um huh? oh i'd just tell him to just stay strong yep. like you know you get the ideal the ideal situation you know go back oh fuck apply yourself a little bit more or do this yeah do that yeah. um and you know who knows life can change but I, I don't want to i wouldn't want anything to change where i'm at now i just want him to feel reassured that everything will be okay it's yeah. probably i'll just tell him that it'll work out yeah um i I've, think that's you know fucking, that's yeah i wouldn't change i wouldn't change a thing about where i'm at at yeah. this point um like yeah uh, uh will we record him before when i said that shannon used to pray shannon's mum used to pray that she'd come home to her I think so. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. So I think she, she's told me that a few times. Um, and like, yeah, we, we've got a really great bond now, but um, there's nothing I wouldn't do for yeah. those guys. And, and, you know, mum and dad aren't listening. I'm, well, if you are, sorry, but I definitely feel closer to um, yeah the Sh Shannon's family than, than mine. Um, yeah. And it's yeah. just, you know, something that another thing that's a, a tough one to do is sometimes you've just got to set boundaries. With people, you know, was like like we spoke about before, you know, I'd I'd have an opinion on something and then realise, no, I don't. That's fucking. That's not. I'd, I'd hear my dad talking. Yep. Or I'd hear my mum talking, and yep. that that was yeah, it was a tough one. And I just I still talk to them. We still you know they still get around and see the kids and yeah, they put in the effort. But I just don't I just don't buy into that shit anymore. Like there's always some drama going on or something, and uh, whatever. Yep. It took a while of you know not talking to them and. Yep. and that shit and then it was hard the guilt the guilt was the hard part yeah you know i, I sort of felt guilty for not doing it but i can imagine that actually yeah it was um because you're like oh you know you do only have one mum and you do only have one dad which is very true yeah um still love them dearly but they just don't own yep. a place in my head like they used to yeah because like you know i remember still being like 26 or 27 and being like oh i want to get a tattoo and i'd like ask them or tell them to like get approval first and shit like that like yeah fucking grown man yep just shit like that and i just sort of yeah realized that it wasn't healthy and um yeah shannon helped me through a lot of that like she could see what i wanted to do and yeah she, she you was, kind of felt like you you still needed that mm, that approval that yeah you, yeah you like, needed someone's blessing just pat on the head Tell yeah. me I'm a good boy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and I still, like, I still, I still, you know, I still seek that approval, but it, not from those people. Yeah. Like now, now when, um, now when I get a, hey, daddy, I love you. Yep. Done. It's a game changer, eh? Hey? Done. It's, yeah. yep. So that's how I know I'm, that's how I know I'm doing a good job. Or when I hear Winston talking to, um to genevieve so like i said he's autistic yeah he'll have a meltdown or have an episode and yeah you know you can't parent that you, no, you can't no. you can't God, no. punish him or give him a spray no. or abuse him or give him a flogging like we would have copped um but i'll just i'll sit near him or i'll take him into the bedroom you know against his will most of the time he doesn't really get in there but if i can get him out of that environment shut the door and just yeah. put him on the bed and i'll sit in the corner and i'll say hey i'm just i'm here daddy's yeah. here daddy's got you I'm right here with you, buddy. Yep. You just come to me and he'll talk to G and he'll just be like, hey, darling, it's all right. Your brother's right here with you. And like he just repeats that shit. And I just know that I'm doing a good Fuck job. Yeah. So. Fuck yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's fucking good. It's weird how your priorities change. Oh, like, and, and just what 
like what approval is. Yeah, if that makes sense. Fuck, that's um, yeah, that's heavy. I didn't expect yeah. that to get that heavy just now, but yeah, mm. that's no, definitely. Winston is just a he's a unique. Little he's kid. very unique. He's um. He's impressive though. He's smart. He's a smart kid. He's fuck. That's the, fuck that's the scary on. bit. So he's one of his therapists actually said, you know, better luck if he was actually like nonverbal. Like it'd be life would be easier for you if he was like more autistic. Really? Yeah, because he's so smart. Oh, of course. He <laughs> yeah. <play> game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah, well, I was like, well, that's reassuring. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, fucking <laughs> oath. Yeah, right. Well, unless there's yeah. anything else you want to bring up or discuss or um, Oh, whatever. look, yeah, no, a bit, it's a bit tough, to be honest. Never never done. No, no. Never that's done I'm it before. Sort of, I haven't. Um, yeah, I was, you know, I think the biggest thing to – really drive home is that just take it a day at a time. Yeah. Like it, it, it still sucks here and there, but oh, 100%. you just, you've just got to push through it. And, um, yeah, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Like yep. fuck me, man. If, if you had walked up to me and said, Hey, if I told you that in 2024, you'd be married, you'd have two kids, you'd have a fucking decent job. You'd own your own house. Yeah. You would have sold your first one and yep. like owned your second one. I would have been like, Fuck off. I'm not in the mood for your shit. I'm, like, I'm trying to fucking die and you fucking come over here talking that shit. Um, but, yeah, it's... um, And that's it. And that's when, when you're in that state too, you, 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 there is nothing in the world that can make you believe that that's going to be your future. No, like, no way in the world. Fucking that's why it's just get to bed. Yeah. Make get sure you... Yeah. You know, now I'm at a point where I've started doing, you know, just some some little shit. So, like, for me time for over the last few years has been sporadic, but it's I've always gotten up at three, three thirty, four o'clock, yep. gone to the gym before everyone's awake because I can't do it, you know, at night time. So yeah, get up and do it before everyone's awake, and you know, grind away. And um, the last, I don't know, probably month or so, I've I've been. Um, I've got a few mates um, that do a little bit of like J- um, JDL. Oh, yeah. Yep. So he's got yeah, project he's blokes. JDL is yeah. going to be a, a member on the podcast. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so just podcast. had you know a couple of chats with him and I was looking at doing um, – he's got Limitless, which is like a personal development thing, and I was looking at that and um, just a couple of chats I had with him um, about that, you know, got me asking a few more questions of myself. And, yep. Um, Brant, who's my, my boxing coach at the moment, he's got uh, the Warriors way and he does a similar thing. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. You're telling but, us about that. yeah, he, he gave me a, a, a template for like a bit of a journal. Um, I'm not a diary guy, but it's sort of it's got prompts. So it's like, you know, what are you grateful for? What's your intention for the day? Um, three tasks that you want to complete and just yep. basic stuff. And I've been getting up. Same thing, getting up early in the morning. I do a bit of a mobility routine just because i am got the hips of an old man. Yep. So try and limber up and then I'll do a bit of journaling and then I'll jump in my ice bath and that's sort of, yeah, it yeah, just puts, right. me in a, puts me in a bit of a better mindset, you know, especially, you know, reflecting on yeah. what life is. Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, and just, yeah, it's something for me to look forward to. So, you know, yeah. find try and find the little things and, just focus on that. Like if you've got something that you want to do, just 100%. something small, pick it, focus on yeah. it, and that's what's going to keep the wheels turning. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm watching, like when I when I first chatted to you about the ice bath stuff and then I, I had this whole big plan of we're going to set up my ice bath and, oh, yeah, Jordan, I'll come out and do the ice bath and here you are. Mine's turned back into a deep yeah. freeze and, and you're you're. Fucking kicking it. Well, I haven't, like I haven't done up. one yet. Yeah, no. It's, I feel like it's made a massive difference. Yeah. Purely just to my patience, if anything. Yeah. Because okay. it fucking sucks ass. Oh, I bet it does. Get in, like, especially you, when you've got to break the ice away to get into it. Um, 
and you sit in like sitting there, it sucks the whole time. Um, yeah. but I just feel like it's made a huge difference. And may, maybe it's not, it might not, not even be that. It might just be the rest of my routine. Yeah. But I just feel like I'm a lot more present and a lot more patient with Winston. Yeah. Especially when I get home from work, you know, he's, he, he can be tough at times. And, um, yeah. Sometimes you just need to remember, like, it's not, he's just, he's just a fucking kid. Yeah. You know, it's not a behavioral thing. He's not doing something naughty. He's just no, learning. No, he's just, he's just learning. Yes. Yeah. That's what it is. Like it's, yeah. No, I'm proud of you, bro. Cheers, bro. It's, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I apologise to the listeners because it's not you know super hard hitting, as if there was like any major events. But no, like no, I said, no, like well, I think we've said it a few times. Like it just sucked. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There wasn't a, an event. But it just sucked. And that's what I think people need to remember that that still counts. If you're not happy, you just need to talk, even if it wasn't a. Yeah, it doesn't need to be anything, anything drastic. Like, and that's, that's the big thing with doing this podcast is, and I think this is probably one of the best times to say it in the, in the first episode. Like, I had a lot of people say, oh, yeah, you know, you're going to be this big podcast. Rah, rah, rah. I'm go- we've got no. We've got no goal in trying to be the biggest, the next big podcast. Like it's if you, if they did, they would have got a real celebrity. Yeah, well, you know, just some fucking has been that was on Sunrise. It was on once. Sunrise. <laughs> so. No, but like you know, we, I don't. It's about quality of people being able to tell their stories, and especially through, especially through the Brothers Oz stuff. Like if 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 we try going to get all these big names and all these big stories, it's it's going to contribute to that that stigma of people not wanting to talk out because their story is not big enough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if, if, if we can, like, just, it's about, all it is is just about people showing their vulnerability. Yeah, we plan on getting some couple of, a couple of big names out there. Um, but it's it's more so for people just to tell their story, and that's exactly what we're doing here mm. now. Like it's doesn't matter how big or how small your story is, if if hey, if it's gonna if it's gonna help you to get your story out, or if it's gonna help someone else just to talk about it, then say it. Don't need to don't need to be anyone. Don't need to be a celebrity. Don't need to be a big Instagram model or whatever but no i've fucking i've been looking forward to this for a little bit and mm. yeah no, i'm proud of you bro no oh, good man Very happy for you happy if you got any questions happy to elaborate if like i said if you know especially some of the some of the shit we sort of skimmed over in terms of well i mean you can't just talk about every day do you know what i mean no, if there's any no. particular aspects no, that, i think so. I, I think that kind of tells it tells the story of mm. the struggle. I don't think I don't think major details need to play a huge part, but I think Yeah, it was probably really high for most of it, so I don't yeah, remember much. Yeah, yeah, you're probably talking <laughs> talking shit for half of it, just memories that you've created. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly got a few of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah. No, well, we might uh, we might wrap it up and All right. thanks for thanks for telling your story, bro. Yeah, no Hopefully, worries. These guys have got something out of it, and yeah, look, and yeah, I'm a bit useless. Um, <laughs> life's you know, life's just intense with, with the kids yeah. and, and everything going on. But you know, if something triggers anything, or if anyone just goes, yeah, sounds a bit like me, and you just want to have a chat, just flick us a message. You know, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Obviously, he's wearing the hoodie. He's part of the group and patched up, patched up. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're not we're not a club. Not a club. Need to really stipulate that. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I know. I know the boys. Bef- before I came into the the admin section of Brothers Oz, I know the boys worked very hard to create colours that didn't yeah didn't interfere with any clubs out there. So, but um, no, we just we we're, we're we're just a group of blokes that just try and fucking help each other out and. Yeah, it's stop, good. stop each other from. You think um, 
You think even like when I was going through my shit, there was nothing. It was fucking no nobody, no. nothing around. No. And then there was nothing like that back then. No. Nah. And you fast forward now, you got like up here we got um Project Blokes kicked off. Yeah. And there's a little another one now, Walk and Talk. Yeah. Um Jordan. Like Jordan, I said, yeah. Brant Brant's got the Warriors way and he, yeah. he tries to do the same thing. Um you know, just it, it, they they're all different. Oh, they've but all got their it's purpose. all about yeah, it's, they've all it's, got their purpose. They, they fucking do a good thing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going uh, Brant with the Warriors way. He's got um, a bit of a, a like a breakthrough event in in a couple of weeks. So yeah. it's just like twelve hours, and we'll be doing you know some martial arts, um, some meditation, just some um, like confrontational work, and yeah, just yeah, really trying to push it out. He's um, he's done all sorts of shit um, all over the world. So he's, he's an absolute trooper okay. um, and has a few good ideas. So it'll be good to just let it out a little bit, I think, hopefully blow off a bit of steam and let go of a few things. Yeah. Yeah, no, that'd be good. Mm. And like any anyone listening that needs to do the same thing, there's, there's, there's going to be stuff in your local area somewhere. There's going to be, it might not be a huge social media presence or anything like that, but there. There's, there's so much stuff out there now where you can do this stuff, whether it's walk and talk, going for a, a walk with a you know handful of blokes and just grabbing a coffee and going for a walk and talking. Like it could be, be anything. Um, seek that sort of stuff out. I'll try and I'll try and link some stuff where I can and um, sort of put it in the notes and whatnot so that you can find out what's in your area and whatnot. But, um, yeah, that's that's one of the big players. And I've really got to – I'm sitting here preaching it now. I've really got to really got to take my own advice and, and do it as well. But it's, um, it's definitely a game changer doing those little group, little group sessions and even if it is just coffee. Yeah. You know? Just having, having that. I don't really know the word, but yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I know we said we'd wrap it up, but it just popped in. So no, just no, check no, on definitely. your mates as well. Um, hundred percent. Yeah, there's a bloke that I'll talk to you afterwards. But yeah, mm-hmm. bloke that we both know that um, I know has had some some significant struggles with mental health, and he's had a crack a few times and hasn't really succeeded with it, and. Um, Something just got into me one day and checked in on him and um, I think I had a bit of a chat about. and then um, you know kept him going. He was going through a bit. I saw something on Facebook, had a bit of a chat and you know kept him poking along and checked in here and there and checked in here and there sort of sporadically, not as much as I'd like to. And yeah, um, yeah he went back down some dark paths, but he actually said, "Oh, yeah, I'm fucking really struggling at the moment." But um, yeah, you and someone else have just been keeping me going. He said, "I just look forward to." hearing from you and I just hit home a bit like we was never really yeah. close with this guy but I just you know just want to, he's a fucking good bloke no matter you know we're not close or anything but he's an absolute champion and I'd hate to see him hate to see him go but it, it was good to know that that message meant something yeah to, to someone so you know if, if you don't hear from someone or if you just think something's off just even, even if just for shits and giggles just send someone a message and, and check in on them yeah Needs to happen, yeah. Definitely needs to happen more often. I think we're all we're all a little bit guilty of that, but um, yeah, even us. We'll be a thousand fucking memes and oh. reels and shit, and then you, you know we will catch up for a coffee every month or two. Yeah, and be yeah. like, oh yeah, no, hanging in there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. All, right, all right. Well, yeah, we might um might wrap it up and call it a night. All right. Anyway, thanks for. Thanks for telling us your story, bro. Hey, that's all right. Like I said, team, set the bar low. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. He's full of humor too. You can't <laughs> tell. <laughs> like do, we, oh, yeah. do we hug? Oh, do we do the... <laughs> nah, love it. Sweet. Thanks, guys.